I'm glad you're here. Are you ready for the word today? I've already started preaching, haven't I? Amen. Well, I got more to go. And then we got baptism right here today when we're done. Going to get baptized. But Stephen going to get baptized. God is good. I'm so glad you're all here. I'm so glad Jackie's here from South Texas. Jackie, welcome. Welcome, welcome. Now, I'm going to tell you, Jackie, people from where you live, we really like them a lot. And people from where you live really like us a lot. So I already feel like we're family. Speaking of, Saul, you, you sounded extra good today. Man, that guy's a good, he's a good guy, isn't he? Unrelated completely. Matthew chapter 25 and 5. It's fun to be in church. No, Saul really is a great guy. Love that guy. He's got a great spirit. He's a great guy. Matthew 25 and 5 is where we're going. Are you ready for the word today? For the DC, you look ready today, brother. All right. Amen. Here we go. But while the bridegroom was delayed, the bridegroom was delayed. That doesn't sound fun. Sounds bad, doesn't it? I don't want the bridegroom to be delayed. I want to be on time. I want you to hurry up. But while the bridegroom was delayed, Jesus was teaching a parable here. He said, unfortunately, they all slumbered and slept. Man, that's sad. But you get tired of waiting sometimes. <laughs> you just go ahead and just do what you want to do. Oh, it keeps going because there's lots of little similar lessons here in Matthew 25. Look at verse 15. And one to one he gave five talents, and to a, another two, and to another one, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. <laughs> Bible kind of sad, isn't it, sometimes? What is up with the disconnection? Why can't you just stay? And then in Matthew 25, 31, when the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory and all the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate them from one and from another as a shepherd divides his sheep from the goats and he will set the sheep on his right hand and the goats on the left. But really, verse 31, I want to draw your attention back to that. It says, when the Son of Man comes in his glory. Where is he at? He's gone? Matthew chapter 25 is full of these, I, I call them God gap parables, where God kind of sets us up and then leaves. And there's moments where you feel like he's a million miles away. It's because he kind of is. Because something special happens during God gaps. Something happens to you during God gaps. But I want to preach today to you that he is still God in the gaps. He's still just as much in power when it feels like you haven't, he hasn't talked to you in a long time. He's still just as worthy to serve when it seems like you have no clue what he's up to, where he's been while you've been working hard, and it feels like he's never going to come back. He's still God in the gaps. And I want to encourage today and tell you there's going to be seasons where you wonder where the Lord's at and what he's up to. But he's still God even though it's a gap you're going through. Everybody say in Jesus' name. You can be seated. Once again, I'm glad you're all here. Let's have a great time in the Word today. Let's pray at the end. Let's have baptism. See what the Lord will do today. I believe God's going to help someone get the Holy Ghost today in this service. I believe the Lord's going to help someone get baptized in Jesus' name besides Stephen today. Matthew 25. Love it. Great chapter in the Bible. Jesus is speaking, giving parables, teaching. Parables specifically about God being symbolically absent for a season where he leaves us to work out some things with instruction, with potential, expectation. Basically saying the Lord doesn't hover over our shoulders watching what we do, slapping us every time we mess up. He gives us a little bit of space. If you've heard of amazing grace, what about amazing space? The Lord gives us space. Space is important for us. Space is where you find out all the truth. It's in the gap that truth comes out. It's in the gap you find out if you really love God. It's in the gap if he's real to you or not real to you. 
In, in Matthew chapter 25, first, there was, let's go through them in a little more detail. There were ten virgins waiting on the bridegroom to come at an unknown time to get them and take them. A symbol of heaven, a symbol of the rapture. They had uh, lamps to see in the darkness so they could find the bridegroom when he called. The problem is they needed to keep their lamps oiled up at all times. And they had no clue of knowing when the bridegroom would come calling. And so the parable is you need to be spending your time not just staying pure, but staying full. Because there are people that go through religion and they try to keep themselves clean, but they're not looking forward to the return of the bridegroom. They're not busy keeping their lamp full with the oil that they never know when they might need it. During the God gap, we've got to be just as devoted, pure, excited, and prepared for his return, even though we have not heard from him in quite a while. You see, he's still building our mansion, even when it seems like he's not around. You'll have to excuse the Lord, because he said, I'm going to go away from you to prepare a place for you, so that one day where I am, you can be also. He's literally building our mansion to be living in for eternity, and you're mad when he doesn't always hang out with you, doing everything you ask him to do, blessing you every day. Y'all, heaven's not right now. Heaven's one day in the future. I'm sorry, you want your mansion now before you finish making your commitment. You don't get your mansion until you make sure you're the real one. you got to make sure you're really qualified to marry the Lord. you got to make sure you endure the engagement process. While he's gone building your house, you got to stay faithful and prepared waiting on him. What will you do in the God gaps? Second, there's a traveling investor Jesus taught about. He gave his workers some talents. And that basically is a Bible word for some financial investments to get them off the ground. What a blessing. He gave one, five talents. He gave another two talents. He gave another one talent. And the reason why he gave different amounts was based on their ability, not partiality. What we get from the master is not based on our value, but rather our ability and our purpose. We can't all be the same body part in the body of Christ. We all have a different role and part to play. The key is just be who God called you to be. Pull your weight. Do your part. Don't compare yourselves among yourselves, for that's not wise. But do what you're called to do. There's no such thing as a pointless part of the body. Hit your pinky and see what happens. That's why Paul wrote to the Corinthian church that those who seem to be like they're the least among you, give them more honor. There's no such thing. We all have a part to play. And so the servant with five, whenever the master came back, because remember he gave them investments and then left and said, you do what you want to do. do. I'm not going to watch you. Now I'm going to check you when I get back, but I'm not going to stand over your shoulder the whole time and make sure you're doing things right. Because I want you to do what's in your heart. And so he gave him the investment and said, now I'm leaving, hope it works out good for you, you know what to do, do something with what I gave you. And so when the master came back, five, the one with five, he doubled it, got ten. The one with two, doubled it, me too, got four. And Jesus told both of them, well done, good and faithful servant, come enjoy the reward, talking about heaven, you're going to be saved. But the servant with one said, I was scared, I know you expect me to work, and so I buried it, I hid it, I didn't do anything with it. The master said, exactly the problem. I expected you to do something with what I left you in my absence. I expected you to do something when I wasn't around. Jesus, I feel the Holy Ghost right now talking to us already. I expected you to be working when it seemed like you didn't know where I was. I expect you to do the last word I gave you. You you hear me? The last word I gave you is the word you should be working when I haven't given you a word in two years. Maybe because the last word I gave you is the word I want you to obey. We're looking for new revelations when we have old disobedience. Lord, speak to me today. It's the same thing. What's in your pocket? Oh, this is that talent you gave me about a year ago. Well, you done with it? Nothing. What's the word? Do something with it. If we get all super spiritual, we get all into it. Give me a new word. Go to a new conference. I need to get a new word. You had not done the last five words. 
You know why you're in a gap right now? Because you're delaying what he said to do. And he said, I'll come back when you're done. But you're delaying and you're in a gap and God is silent. He's not silent. He gave you the word and you won't do it. If you want a new word, do the old word. Look, as soon as you do the old word, you'll get a new word. As soon as you graduate from where God is, has already tried to bring you, he'll give you something fresh. But until you master what God's been saying and pass the test, there's no new word. Hey, Israel, 40 years, I'm going to let you walk in the, in the wilderness for 40 years doing the same thing because of the same word I gave you a long time ago. You never listened to me. So you're on repeat because you didn't do the old word 40 years before they finally obeyed the first word. The first word was go in the promised land, take the land. They delayed for 40 years. They got the same revelation. You should go. Looking for a fresh walk with God. Looking for a new word from God. I'm going to tell you, God's speaking to you right now, but he's speaking the same thing he spoke to you five years ago. And it doesn't sound like a new word, but God's still speaking to you. How many people have told me, I wish God would speak to me? He already did. But you keep hearing that same word over and over, and you think it's your memory. It's not your memory. It's the Lord trying to get you to do steps one, two, and three. Imagine having a conversation with somebody on the job. You were the boss, and you were like, I need you to move that chair. You go out in the office. You go get a snack. You come back. Chair's not moved. I need you to move that chair. You go in the office. You come back. Chair's not moved. You don't get to have much of a relationship if you can't even get past the first one. And a lot of us are sitting back going, God, I don't understand where you're at. I want something fresh and something new. And the Lord is saying, do what I've already told you to do, and then we can move on to something next, the next thing. Yeah, so that's, that's what we're learning here in this parable. We're learning about the gaps that sometimes happen in our walk with God. And so uh, the master said, you could have at least invested it a little bit and made some interest on it but you did nothing while I was gone. And you're going to be in a lot of trouble now because you chose to do nothing in my absence. See, this is where you find out if you really love someone when they're not watching what you're doing. People don't cheat in front of their spouse. They cheat away from their spouse. I want you to notice that the master didn't tell them what to do with it. He left it up to them to do what they wanted in their God gap, there is a lot of room and grace for you to serve God and get creative with your devotion. When it feels like you don't know what to do, I think you know what to do. I think we're waiting on the Lord to make it so clear that we don't have to have a love for him. We want a law when it seems like we can't hear him. We don't want to go off the old things the Lord has said. We want to make excuses oftentimes. We know what we ought to be doing, but we're delaying because we want the Lord. Say it again, Lord. Make sure I heard you right. No, you heard him good the first time. But we delay in those God gaps because it shows how little we love God when he turns his back on us, walks away and says, I'm not, I'm not excluding you. I'm not forgetting you. I'm letting you know it's up to you. Now, we know the Bible says he'll never leave us or forsake us. But, you know, there's times Jesus goes and takes a nap. I mean, when you were walking with Jesus' disciples, he wasn't always looking over their shoulder. Sometimes they were in little meetings having gossips about Jesus. They gossiped about Jesus too. Doesn't that make you feel better? You ain't doing it right if somebody's not talking about you, okay? Sometimes the Lord will turn and pretend he's not looking to see what's in your heart. Finally, Jesus declares, when I return and gather the nations together, we will sort out the goats from the sheep. The way you treat the broken is the way you'll know who you are. When you think I'm not watching you, and you're at that restaurant, and you got a bad waiter who's probably having a bad day, and you treat them badly, or you ignore people that are broken, and you ignore people that are hurting, and you think I'm not watching you because I don't thump you in the ear every time, he said, that's actually where I'm going to judge you based on. I'm not going to judge you based on the times we were at church. And everybody knew we had to look spiritual and act spiritual. I'm going to judge you off Monday mornings when the Holy Ghost wears off. And nobody there but you and your broken coffee machine. And you feel like cussing. 
You feel like quitting. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to judge you based on gaps. I'm going to judge you based on when I wasn't looking. I was looking, but I'm going to make you think I'm not. Because that's where the real you shows up. He's still God in those gaps. Feels like he's a million miles away. He's still worthy of the praise when he hadn't done a thing for you, so you think, uh, in three months. Uh, he's still God no matter what. He's still God when it seems like he's so far and he's not done a thing for you. Hey, he's done enough for us. He was the initial investor in our lives. He gave us the word. He gave us the lamp. He gave us the talent. He gave us the warning. And he lets us lose to live how we want to live. And what we want is that we want to walk around with a whip. Every time we mess up, go, oh, oh, oh Jesus, you're right. Oh, Jesus, okay. You know, like some of y'all chased your kids around the house when they was running from you. They was running, oh, I used to do that back and I was like, oh, daddy, daddy, no, daddy, daddy. That's what you want the Lord to do to you. But that's not love, that's immaturity. The Lord wants to look the other way and see what you do. It's the God gaps we find out who we are. So don't be confused. God sees you in the God gaps. That's where God looks at you the most. He's got eyes in the back of his head. Some of y'all are going to go to hell because of what happens at your house. You think you can get away with it because we're not there. Because you're not in church. I'm going to tell you who you are. You are who you are in your marriage I'm going to tell you who's going to go to hell, people who can't take care of their spouse. Because that's who you are. My pastor was preaching the other day. I always watch my pastor's messages. He said, nobody ought to trigger you if you got the Holy Ghost. Nobody. He said, we, we are in control. We are disciplined. The Spirit of God controls us. No outside source will ever control us except the power of God. He said, anybody that triggers you, you need to go die in the altar again and give your life to Jesus because you got too much flesh. Your coworkers shouldn't trigger you. Your best friend shouldn't trigger you. Ain't nobody going to control us except the power of the Lord. It's in these scary moments the truth comes out about us, and what we do is here's what we always do. We make excuses and say, but you know what? I'm going through a tough time. No, the tough time revealed who you are. That's why God let you have a tough time. Because you thought you was good. You were deceived. You thought it was good when you had money. You thought you were good when you had money. You thought you were good when you had friends. You thought you were good when you had good looks. You thought you were good when you were young. You thought you were good. But you see, you don't know who you are until there's a gap. And God steps back and says, let it be nighttime. Let it get dark so that they think that no one sees them. That's where we'll find out who they really are. I think that's the reason why in the parables Jesus comes back in the night. He comes as a thief in the night. When it seems like he's not looking, when it seems like you're hidden, when it seems like, oh, there's no one will ever know, he knows. And that's why he's going to show up when you least expect it. I've come to preach, he's going to show up in the gaps. I'm going to tell you that when the Lord's going to come back. He's going to come back when the world's in a great gap. He's going to come back in a moment when it seems like he's not here, he doesn't care. He's going to come back and the eastern sky is going to split. And there's going to be a trumpet blown. And all of a sudden everybody's going to go, oh no, I was not expecting this. That's exactly right. Those of us who are watching and waiting, soberly expecting, waiting on the Lord with our lamps full, we are going to be saved. I hope it's you too. Praise God. There's a saying, church family, when the cat's away, some of y'all need a cat around y'all's house. We got a cat outside our house. I'm not killing it. I'm not, I don't even like cats, but I'm not getting rid of it because that thing will kill off some snakes and some mice. You get rid of the mice, you get rid of the snakes. And I'm thankful for that cat. But when the cat's away, the mice are at play. I don't really like cats, but I did have a dog one time. Remember Jazzy? I used to preach about her. Jazzy's one rule in our house was you don't go in the kitchen. There's food on the kitchen. My wife didn't like that, didn't want the dog in the kitchen. So we, we, don't, we don't let her in the kitchen. And she obeyed until one night on the security camera. 
I caught her look around and kind of stretch. She did. She stretched just like that. She was pretending like she was waking up. She, oh, I'm just looking around, looking for some crumbs. You know, she was playing so good. And she just, just casually, you can hear her little nails. You, don't ever clip your dog nails when you want to find out where they're at. It's like, tick, 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 going through the house. And boy, one night I got up and scared to fire. She jumped like a kangaroo. She jumped and ran out. I scared the fighter. She knows she was so submissive and obedient when the master was there. But in her heart, she was thinking, as soon as I get a gap, the real you comes out when you say, where are you, God? It's in those moments when it feels like, is God even cared? Is he real? That's when I need to be on my A game. That's when I need to worship the most. That's when I need to be at church the most. That's when I need to pray the most. That's when it matters and that's when it counts. He's still worthy in those gaps. You see, sometimes after Jesus' sometime after Jesus' resurrection, Jesus left the earth. Our king ascended with all power. He left us with intentions to return one day. His faithful followers waited for ten days before Jesus finally sent his spirit to live inside of them, which means for nine days, nothing happened. He said, wait for me. (laughs) How long? I'm not going to tell you. In perfect Jesus fashion. See, that's how the Lord speaks to you. He don't give you timelines. He just says, wait. He just says, I'm going to give you a little season here. You're going to wait. When? Until. (laughs) Okay, great. That helps a lot. Until. And that's why the Bible says suddenly the Holy Ghost poured out in the upper room. Because it came out of nowhere. There was no plan. There was no way to know. But for nine days of no spiritual activity, no Jesus anywhere, they waited. I'm going to tell you why that day, Tim, was so powerful. Because they were faithful in the gap. And the gap, if you can't survive the gap, you don't deserve day 10. If you can't be there when there is no Holy Ghost movement, if you can't be there after you've prayed, seven, eight, nine, ain't nothing happening. Peter, what are we going to do? The Lord said, wait, we wait. How long will this take until? We're not leaving this room until. He said it, I believe it, I'm going to pass the test of the gap. I don't know the end of this, I just know I'm still going to stay here until something happens. And sure enough, it did, because on day 10, they got the glory and the power of God, not all just on them, but living inside of them, because they waited in the gap. Of silence, living off the last word he said. And sometimes when you don't have a word, you live off the last word. What's the last time God spoke to you? You know he spoke to you. If that's the last time and you know he spoke to you, he's still speaking that same thing to you. He's echoing it to you until day 10 shows up. Until you finally get to the end and the promise, you stay doing what you know is right. I'm going to tell you, that's why I go to church no matter what. There's some days I don't want to go to church because I wonder where God's at, but I go anyway because I'm going to be faithful in the gap. I'm going to get up and pray. I'm going to seek God every day. I'm going to study my Bible in the gap. It's in the gap I seek him. It's in the gap I'm real. It's in the gap I'm going to pass the test. Before the Lord left us, I mean, like, finally left us. I know he gave us his spirit, but, like, his flesh is not here. He gave us instructions. He gave us commandments. He gave us expectations. And we know that we will be judged when he returns and inspects our actions in his absence. Yet there are many who seem to feel like the Lord is clueless and he doesn't have a clue what you're doing, what you're thinking, especially in private. And it can feel like we're free to do what we want because, after all, we're not getting in trouble. You're so used to being caught. But you don't understand. This is like marriage now. It's not, you don't treat your spouse like a child. This is so different. Now this is, you do what you want. And I can't stop you, and I can't make you. I want to inspire you to want to do it. I'm not going to threaten you. I'm not going to threaten you to do something. That's what you do to your children. But your spouse, the marriage, is different. The Lord knows what you're doing. He's just not going to beat you up for it. feels that way because Jesus isn't smothering us day in and day out with little messages and emails and texts that say, I, the Lord, see thee. It'd be cool if there was an app. 
that Jesus gave to us that just popped up every now and then and said, I saw that. <laughs> but the Lord doesn't do that, does he? You know, the Lord's never stopped me from sinning. Oops. He could have, but he doesn't. It feels like he's a million miles away. But he's letting me do what's in my heart. Because I need to know if I love him in his absence. I've got to pass that test. He doesn't harp on us. He doesn't send us scary threats. He doesn't nag us. Because nagging doesn't change anybody. Hear it today. He gave us a Bible and said, study it. All that you need to know is in there. If you want to talk to me, I'm available 24-7. What do you want to do? It's your choice. I'm not going to make you do anything. Yeah. He provided us all of that. He gave us his spirit to comfort us, to lead us into truth. He gave us pastors as tangible examples of leadership on the earth to lovingly lead us. Because Jesus never wanted to scare us into obedience and servitude like the Old Testament law. He simply wants to give you enough space for you to find out who you are while there's still time to be saved. Adam and Eve were not prisoners in the Garden of Eden. They were not in trouble. They were not felons on the loose. They were trusted. They were believed in. They were loved. They were created to enjoy their lives in paradise with their Creator. And God clearly told them what to do and what not to do, and he gave them the space to make their choice. That's why the Bible says that the Lord wasn't around whenever they sinned. But the Lord literally didn't hover over them and say, I'm watching you. He said, I trust you. I'm leaving now. If you want to do it, you can. And the Lord wasn't there when they sinned. And that's the way he works. The Lord does not stay over you like a father trying to scare you. Because you'll never find out what's in your heart if the Lord doesn't give you gaps. Somebody right now in this place, you're saying, Lord, it feels like you're a million miles away. And I've come to preach and tell you he is still your God in the gap that you're living right now. He has given you commandments and words, and you know what you should do. But you've gotten into a pity party. You've gotten into a self-pity party where you're looking at God saying, I wish you'd just be here. I wish you'd just be here. I wish I could feel your presence. And the Lord is saying, I gave you something to do, and you are disobedient. I'm going to tell you the reason why you don't feel God. It's because you gave a word a long time ago that you stopped obeying. I'm going to tell you, you don't want the Lord to come back yet. Let's be honest. If I ain't obedient, I don't want him coming back. I want him to come back when, I, when I've done it. Some of you are like, Lord, get close. You don't know. You better watch it. Lord shows up, and you hadn't done it yet. He's a very just God. What if God's gap is grace? Some of you are like, come quickly, Lord. Come back. I want the rapture. Are you ready for the rapture? You ready for Judgment Day? See, some of y'all, his absence is saving you. Because while you're in the gap and it's dark and you're doubting and the storms are raging, you're seeing how little faith you have. This is a moment for you to master in the gap, in the absence of the master. You've got to master this moment before he comes back, not after he comes back. I pray to God it doesn't come back until you've got your faith. I pray to God he doesn't visit you again until you've obeyed what he said to do last year. I pray to God he doesn't show up with judgment. I pray you'll remember and let it be rekindled what the Lord spoke to you 10 years ago that you know you ought to be doing, but you haven't done it yet. I pray today's a day of remembrance and repentance where you say, Lord, you're right. I've been waiting on you, but you've been waiting on me. You gave me a word. You gave me a spirit. You gave me tools. And I've been sitting here waiting for a fresh revelation because I did not like the last revelation. I'm going to tell you why you're looking for a new word from God. You didn't like the old one. I'm going to tell you why you skipped this message and went online after church. Because this one didn't really make you feel good, did it? But we will pause YouTube videos that we don't like and we will look for a fresh word. No, you don't want a fresh word. You want a convenient word. 
But you know, there's nothing that, nothing that compares to the word God gave you. And you all know, we all know what God asked us to do. If you, were, if you were sincere right now and I asked you how you should you be living, you'd say, here's what I should be doing. But you don't and you delay and you're in a gap and it feels like God's a million miles away, but you've got to master this moment where it seems like you're under attack and it feels like there's no hope and you wonder where the Lord is. He's still God. He's still on the throne. He's still worthy of obedience when it feels like he's nowhere to be seen. What if God would have stood by Adam and Eve and said, well, watch it, watch it. We would not need his word if he was constantly with us all throughout the day saying, I'll beat you. Huh. I'll kill you. Hey, you want to die? Oh, no, just I want to eat some fruit. Fruit look good. Well, it's going to kill you. Well, I guess I won't eat it then. Yep. God gave him the choice. God didn't stand guard. He said, if you want to do it, it's up to you. He didn't put calendar reminders. He didn't send emails. He gave them one word and walked away and said, you remember if you don't want to, that's fine. Make it important in your life or don't, that's fine. But listen, there are consequences, but it's up to you. Adam, Eve, you don't really love God if you have to have a guard in your life all the time. If you have to have something scary always threatening you, you don't really have a love for God. Nothing tests our love and our commitment to Jesus like his absence. Because it's in his absence we find out how devoted we really are to him. Moses in the Old Testament left Israel to go speak with God and get the law. And while he was gone... The people that God just delivered started taking their clothes off, dancing, making their own idol, a fake God. Moses was gone, and the people went crazy. It was in their heart all along. The only thing holding them back from dancing with their clothes off was the man of God and a fear of penalty. They wanted to do it all along. you got to give people a little room to find out who they are. You ought to thank God for the gaps in your life. You ought to thank God for the times he didn't answer. That's where you find out a revelation for repentance. You should wake up out of that thing and say, I can't believe I had to have the Lord always holding me, always there for me. I can't believe he can't go build me a house and I can't stay faithful. Lazarus is dead. And those closest to him feared the worst. Why? Because Jesus wasn't there. You trust the Lord in his absence when it seems like everything's falling apart and you thought you were tight and you thought you were devoted and you thought that you would serve him and you thought I've done everything for you, I've been your best friend and you're letting people die that I love? Can you trust him when he's not there? Anybody could have faith if he was there. But the question is, can you have faith when it seems like he doesn't care about what you're going through? This is why Jesus was so frustrated with religious performers in his day. He would often call them out for praying loud prayers only to be heard by others, for giving money only to be seen when the crowd was watching. They only attempted to be righteous in public places. But when the one that matters the most is in private, it would frustrate Jesus. You see, who are you really at home? You know who knows a lot about homes? Youth pastors. Kids slip things out sometimes. I'm sure Diego and Becca have figured out my house isn't perfect. We're always so pretty, aren't we? But our teenagers, you got to forgive them. They're not good at learning how to pretend like their parents are. I was a youth pastor for 10 years. And boy, the parents have mastered their Hollywood art of coming to church, acting like everything was okay. But eventually that teenager would let it spill. 
And how many stories that I hear and how many things that I witness as a youth pastor that were going on in the home life. And one of the things that would frustrate young people the most is watching their parents dance before the Lord on Sunday and look them in the eyes and call them stupid to their face when they got home. In the absence of the master, when there's no pastor around, and you don't have accountability because I'm the man of the house and ain't nobody going to tell me what to do, it's, that's, that's where you've got to conquer it. And I'm not real until I've conquered that. I'm not really faithful until that's where I've mastered it. The tree of knowledge of good and evil was placed in the center of the garden so that you could walk by it every day and say, I know God may not be here and I know I could, but I'm not. I am in love with him and I'm committed and devoted and I will not do this. Who are you when no one's guarding you? Who are you when you can delete the history? Who are you when you're so smart you think no one knows but God knows? The greater the gap, the more devotion you need. The more silent it is, the more dark it is, the more you ought to be shouting and praising and reading and studying and giving your heart to God. I want to conquer the gap moments. We really don't love Jesus if we can't obey him in his absence. And let me clarify something to you. He's never really absent. He just shows you that he's absent. That's right. When you think he's not looking, he is. When you think you're getting away with it, you're not. Oh, that's where I want to make sure I'm right with God. And I can't pastor that, can I? Because I'm not there, and I'm not meant to be. Yeah, I want to get in your house, but only through the word. I really don't want to come in your house. Because it wouldn't do any good. So you find out I'm coming over, you cover up stuff, hide it. Well, one guy didn't. That was kind of funny. One guy had his gun sitting out. Nude pictures on the wall. (laughs) Yeah, we had a great Bible study. You can guess what my lesson was about that day. (laughs) Yeah, he he went to jail, so. Imagine that. In my closing today, I want to encourage you all. Seriously, I do. And I want to tell you, even when it seems like God is a million miles away, and I felt it and you felt it. And I felt it, and I'm a pastor. He's still working. Yeah, I mean, I'm so glad that if I get real quiet, I can hear a hammer and nails. And two by fours being stacked together. And if I get real quiet, I can hear he's, he's working for me. You see, he's preparing a place for me. And I know it, I wonder, I want him to come do all that now, but hey, we ain't married like that yet, you know. And so I gotta stay faithful. I gotta keep my lamp oiled up. I gotta make sure I'm treating people right. I gotta make sure when it seems like he's not present, he's not there, that he is working when I don't see it. Never forget that Jesus conquered death and hell in the gap called a grave. When the whole world paused and said, he's not doing anything. You didn't know what he was doing. You didn't see what was happening in hell. Because while the whole world was scared and trembling, he was getting the keys to death, hell, and the grave. He was defeating the enemy. The prophecy of the Old Testament in Genesis, where his seed shall bruise your head. He's still God in the gaps. Remember when God told Abraham to offer his son Isaac? It's a pretty scary, depressing moment taking your son that God gave you and giving him back. They traveled several days. They're heading up the mountain. The son is wondering where the sacrifice is, and it's scary. I'm sure it's scary to the father. And they get there finally at the top of the mountain that God said to go to. And he raises his knife up ready to kill and give his son. That's the way you give stuff to God. You give it to God. Lord, this is yours. You want it. It's yours. And as he raised up the knife, the angel said, okay, okay, stop, stop, stop. You don't have to do this. 
because there's a ram stuck all right around the corner. <laughs> While you're walking up one side of the mountain, there's a ram walking up the other. And I came to encourage you today, and I just saw an angel fly by. I came to tell you in the name of Jesus. <laughs> That while you're going through what you're going through, there's a ram on the other side. of. There's two sides to your mountain, church family. There's two sides to your battle. There's two sides. There's your side where it seems like there's no hope. There's your side where it seems like there's nothing. There's your side where it seems like nothing's working. On the other side, there's a ram that doesn't know why, but he's walking his way up the mountain to become the sacrifice to take your place. He's still God in the gap. And you might not could see it by the Brandon, but he's working something for you. But the Omar Lorena, he's working it out. And you might not see it when you go through trials and health and, and problems. But there's a reason. There's a reason for everything. God's got a plan and a purpose for every dark season, every quiet moment, every where are you, God. He's working. He's got a plan and a purpose. He said, I'll never leave you or forsake you. Let's stand all across this house, lift up our hands right now. I'm done preaching, but we got to pray. Thank you, Father. I'm telling you, that angel just swooped right by this place. As soon as I heard it saying those words, I caught it in the corner of my eye. Thank you, Father, for your grace and mercy. You don't have to believe me. That's okay. When have I ever said that? Oh, God, I'm telling you, the word is out for today. Somebody to minister to you and tell you that you need to conquer your gap or it's, it may not ever change. You better conquer your gap. Conquer your gap. That's it. I, all the call today is to anybody who you, you wonder where God's been through your hurt, your abuse, your molestation, where dad and mom and all the problems, and it feels like for years you've been in the center of a gap and it's been dark. I've come to tell you, you find God's grace in gaps. I've come to tell you God is still working for you when it's it seems like he's a million miles away. You ought to come down the front of the church today and say, Lord, uh, help me conquer the gaps uh, of my faith. Uh, help me conquer the moments uh, when it seems like I don't know where you are and it seems like you're a million miles away. Help me, God, be as faithful to you as you've been to me when I don't know what's happening and I can't see it and I can't feel it. I want to do what I know to do. I want to worship like I know to worship. I want to pray like I know to pray. I'm going to keep going forward. I'm going to keep marching forward. I don't know how this thing will end. I don't know how to end up, but I know that you are a provider. I know that you're working in my gaps. You're working in the silence. You're working in the darkness. That's it all over this house. We're seeking God's face together. We're praying the Lord help us, God. It's been lonely. It's been depressing. I don't understand it, but I know I've made a commitment to you to stay pure and stay faithful. When I wonder where you're at and what you're doing, I'm going to go back and resurrect the word you gave me from years ago. Come on, the Holy Ghost is ministering to us right now. God works. God works like this. Come on, he does, he's given you words and you've neglected them. He's given you words and you've shunned them. He's given you words of obedience and you're wondering why he won't talk. It's because he's repeating himself. It's not your memory. It's the Lord. It's the same word of deliverance. It's always been that plan. It's always been that plan. Be weary, weary not in well-doing. For in due season you shall reap if you faint not. You shall reap in due season. What will you do during the gaps? I'm going to shout. I'm going to praise in the midnight hour in the jail cell with chains all around me. I refuse to get down. I refuse to give up my faith. I refuse to quit when it seems like God has forsaken me. I will finish what I started. I'll be faithful to the end. If it kills me, so be it. I'll be resurrected. But I will not quit. I will not stop. The Lord gave me a mission and a plan. I'll see it through. I'll see it through. I'll see it through. I'll do it no matter how I feel. I'll do it no matter what they say. I'll do it no matter how much money I have or don't have. I'm going to do what the Lord has spoken. And that's all that I need is a word from God. Come on, the Lord is ministering all over this house right now. 
Let me tell you something while you're praying. There's been times my wife and I have gone through hell and trials, and my wife pulls out her notes, and she pulls up a note and said, remember that dream I had? Remember that dream that God spoke to us? And in that moment, I feel faith coming because God has already given me a word for what I'm going through today, yesterday. The Lord already gave me a plan and a word for my trouble today, yesterday. Do not forget what God has spoken yesterday. Yesterday's word will carry you through the moments of silence. Chris and Jamie, God called you. He'll always call you. He'll never not call you. No matter what you're going through, brother and sister, he's for you. He's with you. It may seem silent. It may, Hannah, God's for you. It doesn't matter what it feels like right now. I'm sure God spoke to you. You're sure God gave you a plan. You're sure God has a plan for you. I will not compromise what I feel now. I will stay faithful to God in the gap.